I need somebody to cue. Welcome back. You know we like that. Ah, ah, ah. Welcome back. Um, if you are tuning in again, thank you so very much for the love that you've shown and thank you so very much for joining me on this beautiful journey that is the five minute call. And if you're watching for the first time, kick your feet up, take off your shoes, Pisa first and foremost, uh, but get comfortable because this is a space for us to share to inform each other, to really just grow and to nurture and to evolve in this industry that we so very much love and invest in. I was also, shout out to Bunte M Studios, I'm shooting in her space. If you didn't know, we out here, we out here. It's a five minute call in partnership with Function XYZ. We're giving you quality, quantity, information, honesty, naked truths. And this time, we're doing something that I am so excited about and it's getting to know me. A lot of the questions you guys ask, some questions I ask myself, some questions that Ika had for me. And uh, yeah, I think it's only fair that we get right into it. Question number one. I'ma need you to vacate the premises You really reaching to maintain your relevance The main reason why I don't have any friends in this Is when I'm in a room, I'm addressing the elephants And they paying for plays and traffic They better off playing and traffic I peep game for a while, I ain't quick to judge But I can see him breaking character, the jig is the I've been in many positions where I know and I understand my value but I think a lot of the time, especially when you're in the entry stages of your career and really wanting to cement yourself in, in, in the industry, there's something we call paying your dues. So paying your dues means that you know you're compromising your worth, but the opportunity far supersedes and far surpasses the material and monetary value. I've done that for years, um, being very underpaid and overworked. I'm not saying it's fair and that's why platforms like this exist so that we don't pass on the baton of romanticizing struggle. I'm not about that uh, and really paying young creatives their worth. But uh, in the position that I've been in now I can very proudly say that I'm privileged enough to walk away from opportunities that I feel aren't fully beneficial to my gift and my my craft and the years that I've put in, come on. Um, but before, if something wasn't paying my worth, I was able to outweigh the, I think, how beneficial the opportunity would be to me. And, you know, forming strong relationships, that for me was something that I was able to do. And again, I'm not saying it's something we should continue to do, but where I am in my career now, simple. Askis. Let's negotiate. We can't meet this rate, and I say this not only as an actress, I say this as a brand ambassador, as a content creator, and all the many things that I do. Um, if you can't meet my rates, howdy. <laughs> but I also trust that the right opportunities will find me, and people who truly believe in my offering and my worth will see the value in me, and they will pay accordingly. Nakoya ho ho baibitang. For me, I'm not there anymore. But again, I've worked for years. I am where I am. And it's a place of privilege because of the work that I've put in. Over the years, many years of um, really growing and, and evolving in this industry, I've been very intentional about the moves that I've made. I started off in this industry officially when I was 20, going on 21, that was on your TV Live. And from that point, I was very decisive about wanting to foreground the work and not the byproduct that is how people perceive me and the fame that it may come with. So I came into the industry really wanting to choose roles and characters that are rooted in being three-dimensional, multifaceted stories of real, authentic people. I haven't taken much interest in she's popping, oh this is the lead of what 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 and oh sexy and that's not important and I honestly thought that if I was sexualized too prematurely in my career that it would be difficult for people to see past the casing, <laughs> past my, my physical being and they'd be a lot more focused on, um, they'd be a little too focused on what I present myself as and not necessarily um, how great I am as a performer. 
I think people tend to look past or people don't really appreciate how great a performer someone can be if they're positioned as the sex kitten or this bombshell and that's all they are and they're typecast and they're on this show as such and such so I was in Generations as a child, I was on or as a teenager, I was on Impilo as a teenager uh, there's a couple of films that I've done and I'd positioned myself for three years teenager, teenager, teenager and then when I jumped onto Jiva, Netflix, I was like baby girl you're grown, you're 27 now, it's fine you can give them a little bit of heat. And I delivered, I won't even lie. So yeah, now I can confidently say I've paid my dues. I've proven the point. I've proven the point and I don't think, but I, I think now I'm, I've afforded myself room to play more, play with different characters and just really take it from there. There are many conversations that I had about influencers or people that are popping on social media and content creators stepping into the space as actors, presenters, radio hosts, so on and so forth. There are many debates around this. And I've said in two of my previous episodes that we're continuing to evolve as an industry and we acknowledge that for what it is. And we have to acclimatize to that. I will, however, say I, I, I as Candice Mundi, I'm not speaking for everyone else. I, as Candice Mundi said, I'm still a massive purist, purist. I believe in the art of what we do, I believe in the discipline, but I also believe in the respect of that. And I feel like anyone who steps into it needs to approach the work the very same way. It's been very unfortunate that I've been in spaces where because someone has a certain number of followers, they get to work and it's work. We're not here. I say papa, I say, I say let's let's see how great I we're here to work at the end of the day. If I'm here on the Soapy, the series, if I'm here at this interview, I'm there to work. And I've found people getting there, they're not prepared, they haven't read their script, they're approaching everything with an attitude of, like, this is who I am, and I've got so many followers, and, and that really dilutes the, the process, and it dilutes the respect that we have for each other on that set, because, the beauty of, about what we do is it's collaborative. So everyone is there to collaborate. The person on sound, the person uh, doing, do, any person in that space, in pre, in production, in post-production, we're all equally important. So if you come there with a supremacy complex, I think that's the word, if, if you come there with this air of sekifitile, I've arrived, and, you know, it does such a huge disservice to the work. So that's where I don't necessarily agree with someone who's never cared about storytelling, saying I am an actress now. Um, and that's why I'm saying I speak for myself. And I know people may, may screen record this and try and misconstrue and make it seem like I'm jabbing a particular somebody. If you feel like I'm, I'm, I'm making reference to a particular person, that's your bias that you need to question and that's your attack that you need to question. It, I'm just answering a question in terms of how I feel about someone who doesn't have an appreciation for storytelling then taking on the opportunity. And yes, I really believe in diversification and stretching our wings and spreading our wings and playing with various forms of storytelling, but it really does break my heart when I've had some old industry elders guys I've sat with them I sat with Umam Nandi Nyembe guys and you know I asked her questions about the state of the industry as we know it and that's a big thing that she mentioned that when she grew up they grew up in a time where this was a protest storytelling was a protest theater was an active protest against the state as we knew it and society as we knew it and the fact that all of that tends to get lost in translation and now it's about pretending and showing that I'm busy and not being busy or hey guys look at me on the set but you don't even know the first line of your script the fact that that's the space that our veterans are working in not getting paid enough and also getting paid less than someone who's popping on the socials like that, mm, I don't bump that, I don't vibe with that at all. But also, you know, other vets that I've spoken to and other people that I deem as icons and that paved the way for us, having the same conversations. And Libana, they're like, yo, 
The kids of today, they don't even respect us on set. Like they don't even say, Salbonama, they don't even greet, they don't even, like it's, it's this thing of, I don't want to talk to you. Don't be that person, please. Like if you are someone that you, you have a keen interest in, in being an actress, but you know, we know you as a YouTuber, a, a storyteller, as a content creator, a TikToker, please don't be that person that gets on set and disrespects the elder on set. Like it leaves such a bad taste in everyone's mouths. And now we can't even work like as cohesively and gut joy. Like we love working gut joy. Like don't be the person that takes the joy away from us because you're more interested in serving your own superficial interests. It's whack. It's whack. Um, and it, like I said, it dilutes the essence of what we're here to do. We're here to do what we love. We're not here to, to worship you. Simple. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned the previous question that while you're waiting work, I mentioned in previous episode about how brilliant it is that TikTok has become another stage and Instagram and the reels that we can do and the IG lives and um, IGTV have become other means of us taking back our power as storytellers and saying, I have this gift and I'm giving it very selflessly through whatever show, whatever offering, whatever series, whatever jokes, whatever skits that I have. And that's a form of practice. And it reminds me of a sermon. I'm always called in sermons, I'm a child of God. Uh, I remember Pastor Ture Roberts was mentioning how important it is to, wh what are you doing when no one's watching? What are you doing when there's no audience? And when there's no one there to clap for you? Because those are the seeds that you need to be sowing. Because when the time comes and the spotlight is on you and the stage is there, it's the thing that you were doing when no one was watching that will inform what everyone will appreciate in the moment that you finally take that stage. So people kind of wait to show up when there's an audience, when there's all kinds of things, but it's when there's the five followers, it's when there's the 600 subscribers, it's when Amusha Ndiki is in his apartment, sitting there on this cooler box, talking to camera. Those are the moments that matter because then he becomes the brilliant host we know him to be. It's, it's showing up to an IG live that Mandla In invited you to for Deep City and saying, come through and showing up for that. And some people will think, no, it's, it's the no one is watching. It's the going to Grahamstown Festival, doing a stage production and there are only five audience members, but you perform like they're 500. That's the stuff that dreams are made of. And that's what is required of us as performers to not always seek out the big grand validation, but to show up in the moments where even the smallest of applause, even if you're the only person clapping for yourself, is more than enough. All great things must indeed come to an end. Thank you so very much for being part of the journey of getting to know me, the end of part two. Please ensure that you share, like, subscribe, comment, have conversations, open up the dialogues and let people know that these are the conversations that we're having. Take notes, share them, and please rest assured that this is my home as much as it is yours. This is our industry to grow, it is ours to share, and it's ours to pour into and just drink from the fountain of knowledge and information that we all have to offer. From yours truly, Dumelo Candice Pulisele, Consider yourself blessed. <laughs>